Okay, hello and welcome to this PHP tutorial. Um, in this single video, for once, I'm going to be going over the um, sort of principles of object-oriented pro orientated programming. Even good start. Um, <laughs> so I did do a video on this previously. However, all that did was sort of explain the terminology and some of the words involved. Um, I've always planned to go back and do a kind of um, sort of simple example, um, and the problem has been that. Like it tends to sort of seem to overcomplicate things for pretty much every um, example that I thought of. However, the previous tutorial I did, the CSV file, um, actually gave me the idea of a very good example of this, um, or a very easy and simple to understand example of this. Um, so what we're going to be doing is some, somewhat recreating our previous C CSV file reading tutorial, um, this time using a more object orientated style. So stick with this if you want to know a bit about object-oriented programming. Um, it has become a bit of a buzzword, but there are some advantages to it, um, which I'll try and cover if I remember, which I won't because you know me. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, we're not going to be dealing with the whole database export thing because that's not really the point of this anymore. It's become about the actual coding. So let's get on with what we're doing. So I'll just go through the files that we're using first. Um, so we're working in this root folder here, and we've got our you know our few test files that we were working with before. For the sake of this video, we're only going to be dealing with users.csv just as an example. And we've got our test.php page here. Then we've got our core folder, which has the init file in it, which is you know what I always use, and this inc folder, which has this csv.inc.php file in it. And this file previously included two functions: um, read CSV and write CSV. However, what we're going to be doing in this video is creating a class which is going to be used to represent a CSV file. And that little phrase there is the sort of absolute core of object oriented programming. Is that your objects should represent something, like an actual thing. So the examples that often get used in sort of tutorials and things like that are real world examples. For example, um, you might say I don't know, you know, an object like a phone. And then you can look at your method and you can go through some methods and make those up like you could say dial or I don't know, a property could be colour, you know, that sort of rubbish. To be honest, I don't really think they're that clear. Um they don't they're not related to the code at all. So we're gonna be creating a object for a CSV file, which is something, that's an object. You can look at a file, you can see it, it's a physical thing, you can point at it and go look at this file. Um, so I think this sort of, you know, when to use an object and when just to use a function um, sort of comes from just a bit of experience, I guess. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but um, yeah, I guess we'll get on with the example. Okay, so I think probably the best way to explain it is to say what not to do. So something you definitely shouldn't do is just create a class, something, for example, I don't know, misc or util general anything like that that's an object is completely wrong because that's not what they're for if you've just got like a load of miscellaneous functions you just put them all inside a class there's absolutely no point doing that um, so it's sort of like an organizational thing in, in some ways but um, yeah different style okay so let's open up our csv.inc.php file and we'll just get on with the example so where we previously had two functions we're going to now create a class and this class is going to be called a CSV file. And when we create a new instance of this class, it's going to represent a single file. So we're going to create a constructor, which is called when you create the new instance. It's going to be called construct. Well, it has to be called construct. And it's going to take one parameter, which is going to be the file name. Um, because this class, this object, represents a single file, we're going to only have it you know, have the file as a static thing within this object. So we're going to create a new property. It's going to be private. It's going to be called name. And then in our constructor, we're going to set this property to the file name. You could also do a few checks here, for example, making sure the file exists. But um, I'm going to be working on the assumption that, you know, we know the file exists already for the time being at least. Okay, so now we've got that done. Um, by the way, I did. I think explain these sort of terms in the previous video. Um, so I'm not going to go through them in huge amounts of detail, 
but I'll just say briefly that the this variable is a special variable and it represents the current object so it's the instance of the class that is used inside so in this case this case yeah. um, it will represent the object that was created from this class okay so I'm going to create two new methods which are just functions so I'm going to create public public two public functions or methods one called read and one called write like so and these are going to be the read and write functions that we had previously so in our read function what we're going to do is open the file name and loop over it using the file you know thing so it's exactly the same as we did previously so I'm just going to you know. so we're going to do a for each loop over each line of the file which I'll fill that in in a moment. So as line. And here we're going to do some stuff. And our file that we're going to be reading is the this name that we set when we created the object. And we want to ignore new lines. So file ignore new lines. There we go. And then inside of here we want to um, add to our array of rows information, which we don't actually have yet. So what we're going to do is create that as a property as well, because that is a property. The actual data in the file is a property of the CSV file. And we'll initialize it in our constructor. So we'll do this, rows equals an empty array. So then here, we can just use the um, same thing as we did before, which was str get CSV, like so, except spelt line wrong. Um, I should probably point, well, just something I should mention is that we can actually use this whole, this property just as you would a normal variable. So to use these square brackets works fine. Okay, and because we're not um, dealing in sort of procedural sort of code, we don't need to return anything, so that's that method complete. So all we need to do now is just give it a quick comment, which is reads, I don't know, the data from the file. And again, you could do a bit more validation, like you could make sure there are some rows or the file exists, like I said, but um, something I'm going to leave out, because simplicity is my excuse anyway. Anyway, so our write method is going to be the exact opposite of this. It's going to write the data that's stored in the rows um, property to the file. So, first thing you need to do is open the file. So, file equals f open this name, the property and we want to open it in write mode and then we're going to do a for each loop again except we're looping over the rows property as row and inside of here we're going to use f put csv file row like so and then we're just going to close the file because we don't need any more Okay, and that will write the information from the property to the file. So what we've got here is the sort of basics of our object. So someone could create a new instance of this and they could tell it to read the information. However, at the moment there's no way to get this information. So what we're going to do, oh, firstly let's just comment this. So write the data to the file. What was I saying? Um, so what we're going to do is create a method to get and set this rows variable. So we'll do that um, just here. So we'll create a new public function called get rows, and this is called a getter and setter in sort of object oriented, tated, I don't know, circles, websites, whatever. Um, it's not something that I use actually usually myself. I usually just use the property. But I'll explain why this is a good idea in a moment. So obviously if you made this public, you could access it from outside and you wouldn't need these methods. But um, yeah, I'll get to that, don't worry. Anyway, so our get rows method just needs to return the rows. And our set rows method just needs to set it. Like so. As you notice, I've just passed in a parameter here. So we can set it to basically anything. Now the reason it's a good idea to use a, a setter like this 
is that you can make sure that the data is the right format before you set it. So for example we could do a simple check to make sure it's an array which we need. Uh, like so. Oops, there we go. Um, and that's sort of the reason why it's a good idea to use the whole getter and setter idea. Although like I said, you can if you want, you could just make this public and then you could modify it from outside. And I'll do an example of that a bit later on as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is use this class that we've created. I should probably comment these. Sets the rows to the I don't know, given data. And gets the rows. Could be anything, whatever. Do better comments. Pro tip. Right. Okay, so our test page is where we're going to be doing our testing. So to test this, let's create a new variable called CSV. It's going to be a new CSV file, which is the um, name of the class we were just working with. And then whatever you pass into this sort of thing here with the new gets passed to the constructor. So as you can see, we need the file name. So let's just do um, users.csv, like so. Now let's just test for syntax errors and all that by reloading, and we get no errors, which is a good sign. So then we could do CS CSV read, I think it was, not load. Reload again, no errors, which is good. And for the sake of testing, what we could do is, well, actually, let me demonstrate. So say I want to access the rows here. What I could do is try and access this property. So if I do print underscore r csv rows, what we'll get is an error. You cannot access private property because you just can't. That's how private works. However, if I make this public, we'll be able to. And as you can see, we actually get the rows. So you could use that instead of our get rows method. However, like I said, it doesn't allow for checking to make sure it's the right format and all that. So instead of doing um, this, what we do is use the getter, which is get rows. And it's the same output. Um, so I think that's pretty much everything, actually, isn't it? One final thing I'd quite like to mention is that, say you wanted to store this in a variable and modify it, what you would do is do this, then you do some modifications or changes, because I probably would spell modifications wrong, and then you would write them again using CSV um, set rows rows. And obviously you'd need to write the file, so CSV write. However, this line here doesn't look that object orientated. It looks a bit procedural with the whole equals. And you can actually have it so that you pass this in oops, here, like so, using something called pass by reference. Now I'll just demonstrate what that is for now, or for the moment. So uh, let's just do a print underscore r again here of rows. If I reload the browser now, what we'll get is an error. Undefined variable rows, undefined variable rows three times. And the reason we're getting that is because this variable when we're passing it in is not defined. However, if we use pass by reference, which just means that instead of passing in um, the actual value of the variable, you pass in its pointer to the location the value is stored in memory, which sounds complicated, but just think of it as a, um, I don't know, well, uh, it's really hard to explain without going to those silly real world examples. Um, basically, it's, well, it's, the, it's the, like it's what I said, it's the location of the, um, yeah, it's the location of the value in memory. So then if you update that, it changes that specific value. Okay, I'll go to an example. Say if you've got, I don't know, a notebook with some pages in it. And on page 17, there is a word. Pass by reference is passing the value 17, page 17. So then if you change that, it changes what's on page 17. If you do pass by value, it reads the value from page 17 and then passes that. So sorry for the terrible example, but hopefully that made sense. Um, anyway, the way you do pass by reference is by using a AND symbol before the variable, like so. And what that does is allow you to modify the variable. So if I, for example, did rows equals 
hello, and then go back to our code and hit reload, because it rhymes, you can see we get hello. And that's actually been set for the first time in here. If I take this away, we'll get all the errors again, because that's not how that works. Okay. So, let's put that back, because we need it. Instead of setting it to hello, we're going to set it to the rows. Reload once more, and you can see we get our output. And if we just look at our test code again, so I just bashed the microphone, you can see that this looks a lot more um, object orientated, a bit more you know contained. Um, and because each instance of this represents a file, you could do something like copy one file to another um, by doing a new CSV file. So for example, let's change this to users. Users, users, let's call that, ah, I can't call that users, I'll stick with that, that as rows. And then, so we don't need to do that. And then say we wanted to copy that into a new CSV file, we could create a new CSV file down here by doing CSV, uh, I don't know, backup, let's call it backup. Say you're making a backup of your user's CSV file. So we'll call, create a new CSV file called backup.csv. Then you could do backup set rows rows backup right, I think it was right and we don't want that anymore so then if I go to that and that looks wrong, that should be users yeah, that's right, so if I reload the page now, well actually let's just make sure we haven't got a backup CSV file first there is no backup CSV file there if I hit reload no errors backup.csv, which is just a copy, if I look at the file size, uh, four, I can't point at it because it moves, but 4.7, look left of my mouse, and then users.csv 4.7. Um, so I think I've covered everything. I think this final example actually highlights the uses of using objects over functions, because um, this is a lot cleaner than the procedural style. So that is enough of me talking about objects, um, so thank you for watching and hopefully this made sense. I'm going to be trying to do a few more of these um, in the future, so if you can think of any examples that are a bit simpler or if you want them a bit complicated feel free to say that as well, um, yeah let me know. But the absolute key point to remember is that your class should represent an object. Um, I've gone over auto loading in a previous video, so I think you should, I should, I recommend that you watch that that's one of the most useful things about objects is that you can have them included automatically but um, again that's something for another day or another video okay thank you for watching and goodbye